I wanted to talk to Warren Evans. I'm fascinated by the fact that he seems to be like the de facto coordinator of the regional leaders about, about transit. I wanted to get a sense of what is the behind the scenes wrangling that's going on right now? And the fact that he's been so optimistic and in the last two weeks, the, the optimism has kind of fallen off. And he kind of shares a little bit about what it would take to get it back up to that level again. And not only something that we can all buy into as a region that people would vote for, but then that the leaders of all of these counties can say, yes, I think we should vote for this and this is going to be good for our area. Warren, thanks for coming in. I really appreciate this. Well, thanks for having me. Um, so you've become kind of the de facto voice and leader of the, of the regional leaders themselves talking about transit. How did that come about that you seem to be the point person for Mark Hackle and Brooks Patterson and Mike Duggan on where we head with transit? Well, I, I don't think it's a point person for them as much as it was somebody had to kind of uh, take over the uh, orchestrating of the meetings and things with staffs to try to get together. You know, the mayor was going through an election year last year. I don't think he had as much time to focus on uh, transit as the other three of us did. So and you volunteered then and said, look, I can help start to corral this. I don't know if I said the second part, but I did volunteer <laughs> uh, uh, to facilitate the meetings. And in all honesty, all of the uh, elected staffs on transit worked extremely hard. It wasn't you know, working any harder than my people. It was just we're kind of pulling the meetings together and trying to keep on a, a timeline to at least meet and try to work through the issues. Where are you right now? You know, uh, if you'd asked me two weeks ago, I said, you know, we're looking really pretty good. Uh, right now, I'm not so sure. Uh, one of the issues all along has been the issue of what should the taxing jurisdiction look like. And uh, I thought we were at the point where uh, we kind of draw a horizontal line through um, counties like Oakland and Macomb and those north of a certain uh, point on the line and who didn't feel a need for the service, the service wasn't going to be for them, wouldn't be paying for it. Uh, and you know, those who, who, who felt the need for it south would be a part of that taxing jurisdiction. Obviously some would and some wouldn't. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was a, an opportunity to make some sense out of it in terms of a regional uh, approach. Uh, that kind of fell apart and because there were some communities that wanted to opt out. And while I understand the need to opt out, uh, by definition, a regional plan serves a region, not without donut holes throughout and the region. Hasn't that been some of the problem all along when you have areas that are able to opt out of a bus line or, or, or a system and then that you then you kind of have a whole system of poles and it doesn't connect all the way for some places? Right. I mean, it certainly doesn't make it easier in that case. And I mean, I get the arguments about uh, if you don't want to use it or it's not going to be useful to me, why would I be taxed for it? Uh, but there's also the more compelling argument that the region has to move forward like other parts of the country. And if it's going to be a region, then look at it in terms of the benefit you get for the region. Increased uh, employment opportunities, uh, you know, other folks coming here that, uh, folks, companies coming here that wouldn't have otherwise. And so there's, in my mind at least, there's a value to the region way past whether I get on it and take a ride or not. So it's the greater good, essentially, argument. Do you believe that that, w that argument was made, though, in 2016? And obviously, it got so close, but it did not sway voters. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, I certainly, uh, if you went back to 2016, uh, think that uh, uh, harder work by any of the, the four regional leaders, uh, any additional work could have gotten over that hurdle. Uh, but it was a plan that was kind of brought to us collectively. This time, at least, we've ventured out to create the plan ourselves, the idea being if we can come to something that we can live with, there's some ownership. And if there's some ownership, there's some enthusiasm in pushing it. If there's some, some enthusiasm in pushing it, there's a much more uh, significant likelihood that it'll pass. So you're looking for a specific buy-in from Brooks Patterson in Oakland County and Mark Hackle in Macomb County and saying not only are we going to see this is happening but say we're supporting this and we encourage the people who live in our counties to vote for it. Correct. That's and what you're looking for. That's what we're looking for and uh, I'm not extremely optimistic that we can get there. Why not? Uh, because I think you know uh, uh, 
uh, both Brooks and, and Mark have indicated they have some real concerns about their constituents being more interested in other things like infrastructure repair and other things uh, than the transit. And they are going to go where they think uh, their populace wants them to go. It's not an argument. You know, we, we all get along well, work with each other as best we can. I take a differing approach. I think we need regional transit. You know, I think we've got to be prepared to pay the price for it, and I think we will get a yield far in advance uh, or, or far more significant than uh, just the tax payment uh, mm -hmm. that we wind up making. But if that can't happen, then we need to look at who wants to be in and who doesn't want to be in. If Washington is interested, and they are, and if Wayne's interested, and I am, uh, and Detroit's interested, then there may be a plan that we can create that connects Ann Arbor and Detroit and connects to Metro Airport as a starting point. I mean, if, if we're successful doing that, successful being able to pay for it, because there's a tax base issue there, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, then people can also opt, there is a concept of opting in too. If people don't see it, if they're from Missouri, you gotta show me, uh, and government has the ability to show them something viable, mm -hmm. it's amazing how quickly people will join something that they can see some tangible positive result as opposed to uh, just talking about it. And we've been talking about this since the 70s. Is there, is there some concern though with transit that you do have a moving population then and maybe you have an Oakland County and a Macomb County where they can see that people can then maybe travel out of their county and then there's an accessibility that changes in a different way and you get people moving in a different way that there is maybe a, a little bit of territorialism and saying oh, maybe we want to keep our people in the county that we're in right now. I, I don't see that. In fact, I see it the, the, I see it the opposite way. Um, millennials want to come to the city. The city is developing. Uh, they may want to come for entertainment. They mm -hmm. may want to come for sports events. They may want to come for whatever. What they won't want to do is drive down because they'd rather text, number one. Uh, and number two, they don't want to pay $50 for parking. Uh, and number three, they don't want to have to drive all day to make it happen. Uh, and so I think the incentive to keep them in residence in suburban communities is get them downtown quickly on transit and get them back home uh, because the option is if it's taking too long, maybe I'll just not stay home. Maybe I'll, mm -hmm. you know, move into what you know, is, is turning out to be very exciting in terms of development, uh, developmental stuff in the city of Detroit and close around. You're, you have been working on this since April yeah. with the staffs of all of the other county executives and, and, and Mike Duggan. Is there a feeling that if you can't do it this year, if you can't do it in 18, then when can you do it or can it ever be done in this region? Well, these are really tough questions. I mean, I think uh, my sense is those who say let's hold it off till 2020 are really saying let's just hold it off. I don't think 2020 uh, is necessarily going to be any better time um, to deal with this than, than 2018. Uh, I mean, I think it's part of it's definitional. What I hear Brooks saying is, I'm for regional transit, but parts of the region aren't gonna be a part of it. I mean, it's, to me, that's counter to, the, to what regional is and connecting people. It's hard to connect somebody around the city and, you know, to, in that sort of way. And, I, and I'm not knocking his position. If that's what he believes, then maybe definitionally, we're going about this the wrong way. If, it, if mm -hmm. it's either going to be a regional system or it's not. If it's not going to be a regional system, then what do you want to do or what do we collectively want to do, if anything? Uh, so are you at that point right now with those conversations? Yeah, we're at the point of uh, trying to figure out if there's some way this thing can work uh, and we can do it without the firefight that will come from some communities that are very, very uh, against the plan. I, I, I have yet to figure out how to do that, uh, but there are certainly people smarter than I am, uh, and we're all you know, sitting down working through it, so uh, kind of remains to be seen. As I said, I'm uh, generally an optimistic person to begin with, but you know, I'm not gonna bet the family farm on it. It would seem that 
there has been a lot of regional cooperation and that everyone wants to make sure that good things are happening for everyone all around Southeast Michigan in the last five to 10 years, I think I've, I've seen this. But would you say that this is probably the biggest sticking point that you'll ever have with regional leaders is transit? Yeah, well, it's the biggest one so far. I mean, if you look at uh, the DIA, we all support it. Uh, if you look at the usage of the DIA, I'm sure there are many places in the region that don't spend a lot of time at the DIA, and there are other places that do. But we all pay for it. We don't opt out here or there. If it's the uh, it, Cobo Hall, we're all in collectively. Uh, there are no opt-out cutouts in terms of uh, who's going to fund it, you know. So, I mean, there, there are plenty of examples of where the residents of this region have said, this is something of value to all of us. Uh, we'll pay the millage to do it because we think the arts or Kobo or uh, the zoo uh, are all things that we need. The question is, why is transit so much different? And, uh, I'll just leave it to people's hearts and souls to think about that. Um, but I think it's, you know, it is significant for this region and it will get more significant every year. And so as you push this off, it's just going to be harder to do later on. It's certainly going to be more costly because every year the costs mm -hmm. of those kinds of construction things go up. Conversely, I'm, I hear Mark saying, my people are hollering about potholes and in infrastructure. They're not hollering about transit and I'm sure he's correct. But one doesn't have to uh, preclude the other. So, I mean, I understand that everyone has their constituencies, everyone has their thoughts about what the future ought to bring, uh, and we just have more trouble with this one than we <laughs> have uh, on other things. Let's take your optimistic tact on it, and let's say in the next 20 days you come up with some kind of plan to put it on the 18 ballot. What do you think it would need, or what do you think the people would need to hear to support something like that? I think they need to, to, to see and hear what the functionality would be for them. They rejected it once before. The, the plan now has far more uh, meat on the bones with respect to the services that would be provided, number one. I think they need to know those. But I think even more, in my heart of hearts, if the four regional leaders are in favor of it, uh, and if we spend time in the communities explaining the value that we think it is both to the community and to the region, uh, then it passes. I mean, the last one was brought to us with somebody else's product. Uh, most of the leaders were lukewarm at best, at least lukewarm in getting out pushing for it. You know, I supported the plan, because it's the only plan out there at the time, uh, but you know, we, we weren't kicking down doors um, you know, trying to get people to vote for it, and it only lost by 1%. Well, you'd have a little bit more sweat and elbow grease in this one. Yeah, I mean, I think of all of the regional leaders, if they say, whatever the plan is, this is something I believe in, uh, and I suggest you give it a good look and vote for it, I think there's enough juice there uh, to make that happen. I mean, the, one of the reasons you're a leader is because somebody out there believes you know what you're doing, and that you have the best interests of the public at heart. All right. We'll have to see what happens then uh, in the next, what, two weeks, three weeks, you think? Oh, uh, who's counting anymore? Who's, I was just going to say, what doors are you going to be kicking down over the next uh, three yeah, weeks to, no, to figure we'll, this we'll out? We'll keep plugging away at it. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks. Thanks for the time and, uh, and getting everybody up to speed on, on where this is headed. Thanks so, for having me. All right.